Good evening and thanks for joining us at 6. I'm Kevin Christopher. And I'm Angie Bevan. And tonight for Nancy Cox, we are tracking the possibility of snow into tomorrow morning. Yeah, a little bit. Bill starts us off with what you can expect where you live. And for most of us, it's not going to be a whole lot out of this. And you see the advisory go, oh my gosh, here comes winter. That's, no, this is nuisance category at worst for, for a lot of us. So what we're looking at is the advisory, and it runs uh, up as far north as Cynthia and Carlisle through Lexington to Richmond, then back toward Lake Cumberland. Uh, that's for light snow coming in and maybe a little freezing rain could come in as well. That would be more across the southern tier of counties. For a lot of us, I-64 corridor north, it's a fraction of an inch to an inch of snow possible from I-64 in south. A fraction of an inch to a couple of inches of snow will be a possibility. So you do figure out here the chances for accumulating snow are a little bit better the further south you go. On the MaxTrack Live Doppler, we're getting returns now much closer to the radar site, which means we're starting to moisten the lower part of the atmosphere. So it's now just a matter of time before this begins to fall and it may begin as a little bit of rain at your house, but sh should transition over to snow fairly quickly. You can see the movement of this is coming almost due east. So future track follows that same theme from seven o'clock this evening. We watch stuff coming in from west to east, almost due east with that. A little bit of rain on the Tennessee line. A lot of us are in some light snow as we get you to the latter part of the evening. Then in the early morning hours, we'll see that whole mess get out of here pretty quickly and things will improve during your day tomorrow. Again, this is nuisance at worst. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. All right, Bill, thanks. Well, do you remember what you were doing 16 years ago today? If you happen to live in Lexington, there's a good chance you were in the dark. Catherine Collins tells us what people remember about that crippling ice storm and how it's changed emergency responses. That's the big story at six. On this day in 2003, the city was on day one of an ice storm that would leave many without power for over a week. Here on Nicholasville Road, things looked very different thanks to icy conditions and downed trees. We scrapped all of our regular Sunday programming. Phones rang off the hook at WVLK. We were a lifeline to a lot of people that it was the only source of information that they had. Dave Cruzenclaus, known as Cruiser to listeners, put in overtime when the ice storm hit. He took calls from many people who needed to vent. By the time you got to the end of that eight-day period, the people who still did not have power, they were calling and now they were angry. The storm was overwhelming for emergency management. It was huge and it was a big undertaking, so I think that's what made it last so long. But Patricia Duggar, director of emergency management, says lessons were learned. Today, if a storm like this one came through, she says there wouldn't be as much damage and the power would be restored faster. Duggar says everyone can repair themselves should something like this ice storm happen again by having an emergency supply kit. Covering the news in Lexington from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom, back to you. You can find a link to the city's emergency management site on ours, lex18.com. Kentucky's Department for Public Health has confirmed that a child living in the Bowling Green area has been diagnosed with measles. Of course, that's a highly contagious disease, but it's very rare in Kentucky, but it can be picked up when traveling abroad. Washington State is currently dealing with an outbreak of measles. Alexa Helwig talked to state health officials to see if there is any connection and what this means for Kentucky. It's been nine years since there's been a confirmed case of measles in Kentucky, but a child younger than five is now suffering from the highly contagious disease. He was not vaccinated, he was not immune, and he with his family traveled uh, internationally. The Barron River District Health Department in Bowling Green reported the child's positive test results Earlier this week, Dr. Artis Hoven is an infectious disease doctor. She says the young boy traveled to a country where measles is common and started to notice symptoms when he got back to Kentucky. Fever, sore throat, red eyes, cough, runny nose, uh, and then ultimately the rash which the classic rash, which develops within a few days after the fever develops. So far in 2019, the CDC is reporting 101 confirmed cases of the infectious disease. Currently, there is an ongoing outbreak of measles in Washington state. This one isn't related to any of the outbreaks ongoing in the U.S. right now. As a case of measles is pretty rare in Kentucky, prevention is very common. Most kids get immunized when they're about a year old. This is a preventable disease. Let me say that again. This is a preventable 
disease. Health officials believe the child's exposure to the public was minimal, and Dr. Hoven says he is getting better. Covering the news, Alexa Helwig, LEX 18 News. The flu remains a cause of concern as cases in Kentucky continue to grow. Doctors at the Lexington Clinic tell us peak season is now usually running between December and February. Cases typically start showing up as early as October and can last until April. Medical professionals say even though the measles and hepatitis A have been prominent in headlines recently, do not let your guard against the flu down. Yes, the flu virus has not taken a backseat to anything. Uh, it's, it's still important to keep our awareness up, to get vaccinated against the flu, uh, wash your hands well, stay, stay away from those that may be sick. So, uh, yeah, I don't want anybody to overlook the flu virus. It, it can be very deadly in some cases for our elderly patients and those very young as well. Several school systems in our area were forced to cancel classes this week due to illness. The Madison County coroner says the autopsy for the man found dead in a field yesterday is complete but they'll have to wait for toxicology results to determine his cause of death. 14 days after finding the body of missing mother, Amanda Bailey, the body of Sinclair Johnson was found also on Concord Road in Richmond. The coroner says Johnson's autopsy results show he was not stabbed or shot, and he didn't see any other trauma on Sinclair's body. He says his death could be caused by environmental conditions, but toxicology results will pinpoint the exact cause. Police say it's possible Johnson is the man they were chasing on foot days ago following a robbery, but they're still investigating. Nearly 200 people are expected to join a search effort for missing Madison County mother Savannah Spurlock tomorrow. Search leaders are keeping an eye on tonight's forecast, which could impact their efforts. Tiffany Jackson has the story. David Rader says he hopes by this time tomorrow, Savannah Spurlock's loved ones will have some answers. Our goal is, is, is to cover probably 90% of that uh, of that county in and around Lancaster and there's no there's no direction I'm not going to go. He, his Ohio Midwest chapter of Texas Equus search crew and dozens of volunteers will search Garrett County tomorrow in hopes of finally finding Spurlock. Raider says the only thing in their way could be the wintry mix expected overnight. When you're looking for for evidence and, and small things and uh, if you have snow covering them, it kind of makes things a little bit more difficult, and we don't want to miss anything. Right now, the search is on, but if things get too bad, he says they'll have to call it off. If there is one to two inches of snow on the ground, uh, just count on not coming, and we'll reschedule this probably for the following weekend. Raider is hopeful that Mother Nature will hold off. This girl needs to be found. We need to bring her home for her family. Um, you know, the kids, her mom. Uh, she's a mother. She's a she's a daughter. She needs and deserves to come home. Covering the news, Tiffany Jackson, LEX 18 News. The search will begin at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. The command center is at Hyattsville Baptist Church in Garrett County. If you're interested in volunteering or offering to help searchers, you can find information on our website, lex18.com. Savannah's mother is pleading for help to search for her daughter. She says any found item, any new clue, no matter how small, could help bring Savannah home. We need Savannah home. It's been six weeks. You know, I mean, it just, it's so heartbreaking to have to go through this. And if there's anything that could help us locate her, just please come forward with that. Hear more from Savannah's mother tonight on LEX 18 News at 11. ESPN's College Game Day gets the excitement going tomorrow morning at Memorial Coliseum as the number five Kentucky Wildcats are set to take on number one Tennessee tomorrow night. No surprise here. Tickets have been sold out for days, if not months, and we know True Blue fans are willing to do almost anything for a ticket. But UK's warning fans, you better check your sources. Claire Kopsky has the story. I think we got a good chance to beat him. It'd be a huge win for the season. I uh, get some uh, momentum towards March Madness. I know Tennessee is really good, but I think our guys are ready. Fans are confident and will soon pack Rupp Arena for a sold out game to show it. But even though the game is sold out, there are still fans scrounging for seats. Many times when an event gets sold out, that just primes the third party market for people who are still desperately looking for tickets to the event. Earlier this week, UK Athletics put out a reminder to use caution against counterfeit tickets and unauthorized sellers, in anticipation that scammers were already at work. Included in that reminder, UK Athletics listed the sources authorized to sell men's basketball tickets.
The Better Business Bureau says if you're still looking for a ticket to watch out for the red flags. For instance, if they want you to pay with an untraceable method, such as uh, wiring money, that's dangerous because you don't, there's no way to get that back. Uh, if they want you to pay with some sort of a gift card, a reloadable card like an Amazon card or a Google Play, that's a classic for con artists to use. The Better Business Bureau's other tip, choose the right card in your wallet. If you're buying tickets from a website, be sure to use a credit card if you can because you always have that opportunity to dispute the charge if something goes wrong. Uh, you may miss the game if you ended up with no tickets or bad tickets, but at least you would get your money back. Money back that fans could put towards another game's ticket. Covering the news in Lexington, Claire Kopsky, LEX 18 News. Still ahead, a seven-year-old Southern Kentucky boy is already dreaming big about his future. He wants to be a police officer, and now he's on a special mission. Watch how you can help this Wayne County boy collect as many badges as he can get from all over the world. That's next on LEX 18 News at 6.